August 17, 1976. Midnight. The ocean floor suddenly rips apart 12 miles beneath the surface. Within minutes, walls of water 30 feet high obliterate 700 kilometers of coastline. 8,000 people dead, 90,000 left homeless. And it all started in a trench system that scientists barely knew existed. But first, you need to understand what happened that night. At 12.11 a.m., while most of the Philippines slept, a violent earthquake measuring 8.0 on the moment magnitude scale struck near Mindanao Island. The shaking lasted about 30 seconds. Buildings collapsed, bridges crumbled, power lines snapped. But the earthquake itself wasn't the real killer. What happened next was far more deadly. Two to five minutes after the shaking stopped, the ocean began to recede from the shoreline. In the darkness, confused survivors stumbled along the exposed seabed, not understanding what they were seeing. Then the water came back. Waves reaching nine meters, that's 30 feet, slammed into the coast. The tsunami devastated over 700 kilometers of coastline bordering the Moro Gulf. Pagadian City lost 2,000 people. In Cotabato City, 1,500 died when the waves struck. Bodies were found floating in the water for days afterward. 90% of all deaths that night were caused by the tsunami, not the earthquake itself. People had survived the shaking, only to be swept out to sea minutes later. 8,000 people died, 10,000 were injured, 90,000 lost their homes. It was the deadliest earthquake the Philippines had experienced in 58 years. So what caused this catastrophe? A fault system most people had never heard of. The Cotabato Trench. Unlike famous trenches like the Mariana Trench or the Philippine Trench, the Cotabato Trench is what scientists call a less prominent trench system. It's a north-south underwater feature that runs along Mindanao's coast, where it meets the Moro Gulf in the Celebes Sea. But less prominent doesn't mean less dangerous. The Cotabato Trench is a subduction zone. That means one tectonic plate is diving beneath another, sliding deep into the Earth's mantle. In this case, the oceanic crust of the Celebes Sea is being forced underneath the Philippine Mobile Belt. This process happens slowly, just a few centimeters per year. But over decades and centuries, enormous stress builds up along the fault line. And when that stress is finally released, the 1976 earthquake occurred at a depth of 20 kilometers. That's about 12 miles beneath the ocean floor. The rupture represented thrust faulting along a plane dipping northeast at a shallow angle. In simpler terms, the ocean floor suddenly lurched upward. And here's why that created such a devastating tsunami. When an underwater earthquake causes vertical displacement of the seafloor, especially in shallow water, it displaces a massive volume of water above it. That water has to go somewhere. It radiates outward as a tsunami. The shallower the earthquake, the more intense the tsunami. The 1976 quake occurred at just 20 kilometers deep. That's considered extremely shallow for such a powerful earthquake. The combination of factors that night created a perfect storm of destruction. Factor one, the time, midnight. Most people were asleep. When the earthquake struck, they ran outside in panic and confusion. In the darkness, they couldn't see the ocean receding. They didn't know what was about to happen. Factor two, the speed. The tsunami reached the coastline in just two to five minutes. There was no time for warnings, no time for evacuation. The people standing on the exposed seabed, looking at stranded fish and wondering what was happening, were caught completely off guard. Factor three, multiple waves from different directions. The Moro Gulf is semi-enclosed, surrounded by the main section of Mindanao on the east and the Zamboanga Peninsula on the west. When the tsunami waves hit the coastlines, they reflected back and forth across the Gulf. Some areas were hit by two or three waves in succession, and factor four, complete lack of preparedness. In 1976, tsunami warning systems in the Philippines were primitive. Seismologists knew the region had fault zones capable of producing earthquakes, but the Cotabato Trench wasn't well studied. Previous earthquakes in the area had been moderate. Nothing that suggested an 8.0 magnitude event was possible. The people living along the Moro Gulf had no idea they were living next to one of the most dangerous underwater fault systems in Southeast Asia. So why are underwater trenches like the Cotabato Trench so dangerous? 
Subduction zones are where tectonic plates collide. One plate, usually denser oceanic crust, gets forced beneath another. As it descends into the mantle, it creates a deep trench on the ocean floor. The Philippines sits within what's called the Philippine Mobile Belt, a highly deformed zone between the converging Eurasian and Philippine sea plates. It's one of the most tectonically active regions on Earth. And here's what makes it even more dangerous. The descending plate doesn't slide smoothly. It gets stuck. Pressure builds, rock bends and deforms. This can continue for decades or even centuries. Then, suddenly, the fault ruptures. All that stored energy releases in seconds. The 1976 Moro Gulf earthquake released energy equivalent to thousands of nuclear bombs. And because it happened beneath the ocean at a shallow depth, nearly all that energy went into displacing water. The result was a tsunami that traveled at speeds up to 800 kilometers per hour in the open ocean. When those waves approached the shallow coastal waters, they slowed down, but they also grew much taller. Nine meter waves, 15 meter waves in some locations, walls of water carrying the force of the entire ocean behind them. Nothing built by humans in 1976 could withstand that kind of force. Concrete buildings crumbled, bridges collapsed, entire villages were simply erased from the map. Here's what most people don't realize. The Cotabato Trench is still active. It's still accumulating stress. And another major earthquake is not just possible, it's inevitable. The question isn't if, it's when. Modern seismology has identified several major fault zones in the region. The Sulu Trench in the Sulu Sea, the Philippine Trench east of Mindanao, and of course, the Cotabato Trench that caused the 1976 disaster. According to FIVOLCS, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, this region experiences moderate to high seismicity consistently. But there's good news. Since 1976, the Philippines has dramatically improved its tsunami warning systems. Seismometers now detect earthquakes within seconds. Coastal communities have evacuation routes and tsunami sirens. People know the warning signs, strong shaking near the coast, the ocean suddenly receding, unusual ocean behavior. The knowledge gained from the 1976 tragedy has saved countless lives in subsequent earthquakes and tsunamis. Deep beneath the Moro Gulf, tectonic plates continue their slow grinding collision. Pressure builds, rock deforms, energy accumulates. The Cotabato Trench is sleeping, but it's not dead. The 1976 Moro Gulf earthquake and tsunami killed 8,000 people and remains one of the deadliest natural disasters in Philippine history. It was a wake-up call about the dangers lurking in underwater fault systems that scientists barely understood. Today, we know more. But the ocean floor keeps its secrets, and the next rupture could happen tomorrow. What other deadly underwater trenches are hiding beneath the ocean? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more deep sea mysteries and disasters, subscribe and hit the notification bell, because the deepest dangers aren't always the ones we can see.